Hello everyone and welcome to Quick Med. Today we will be discussing hepatitis B serology, so let's get into it. The hepatitis B virus consists of an outer envelope as well as an inner core which houses the DNA and the enzymes used for replication. The outer envelope consists of a surface antigen, which you can remember as S for surface, and the inner core contains the core antigen, which you can remember as C for core. And in the region between the outer envelope and the inner core, we have an antigen called the hepatitis E antigen. The surface antigen, if found in the blood, indicates that the person is currently infected. The E antigen indicates a high level of viremia or infectivity. And this is because the E antigen is actually a secretory protein that is released when the virus is actively replicating. The core antigen is actually not found in the blood and so it cannot be detected on our routine blood tests and so we will skip this for today's video. The three antigens that we talked about are just some of the things that we can find on lab results. We can also find different antibodies that correspond to those antigens. So we have our surface antibodies, our E antibodies, and we also have our core antibodies which can be broken up into the IgM and the IgG antibodies. And this is important to differentiate because the IgM antibody corresponds to a more acute infection while the IgG antibody indicates a more chronic infection. Let's now go over the serologic course of hepatitis B. When a person first becomes infected with the virus, at around one to two months, they will begin to develop serologic markers, which include the surface antigen, which is represented in this red box, as well as core antibodies represented by the green line here, particularly the IgM antibodies because this is an acute infection. Shortly after the surface antigen forms, the person will also develop E antigens, which indicates again a high level of infectivity, which later can seroconvert into the antibodies against the E antigen. Later on, the body enters what we call a window period, which is where the surface antigen is no longer detectable in the blood. And this is because antibodies, particularly surface antibodies, are being formed against the surface antigen in order to try to fight off the infection. This antigen and antibody form complexes that are not detectable in the blood. But when this window period ends, you can later on detect the antibodies against the surface antigen. The IgM antibodies, which were represented at the core antibodies, later convert into the IgG antibody. So this represents one scenario that can happen once a person is infected. But in this case, the person recovers from the infection, which is denoted by the fact that they have surface antibodies that have formed. Now this is the second scenario that can take place, which is when a person does not recover from the infection. Similar to the previous graph, you form surface antigens, but these linger for a longer period of time, as you can see in this red box. You also later form your E antigens, which seroconvert into the E antibodies. And the IgM core antibodies initially form and later become the IgG antibodies, but as you can see here, we do not form any surface antibodies. So this indicates that the person has a chronic infection. So just to summarize what we've discussed, the surface antigen, when present, indicates that the person is currently infected. There is no other exception to this. The surface antibody indicates that the person is immune. But this can indicate one of two things. This can mean that the person has recovered from an infection, which is what we saw in the first graph, or that the person has been vaccinated against hepatitis B. Because what happens with the vaccine is we inject people with a small amount of surface antigen so that their body can mount an immune response in the form of surface antibodies. If you're wondering, how can I differentiate between a person who's recovered from an infection versus someone who's been vaccinated, this is where the core antibody comes into play because this will indicate that the person has been exposed to the virus because the vaccine itself does not contain core antigens. It is only the virus if in the body that will mount an immune response where you will have core antibodies being formed. All right, so let's run through some examples now. So we have a set of labs here that show that this person is negative for surface antigen, which means that they are not infected with the virus. Their surface antibody is also negative, which means that they are not immune against the hepatitis B virus. If we look at their core antibody as well, we see that that is negative, so this means that they have never been exposed. So putting all three of these together, we can see that this person is susceptible 
to hepatitis B vaccine because they have not been exposed to the virus, nor have they been vaccinated against it. In this set of labs, we see that the surface antigen is negative, which indicates that the person is not currently infected. The surface antibody is positive, which means that this person is immune. But we now have to look at the core antibody to determine if this was due to vaccination or due to previous exposure. The core antibody here is positive, which indicates that this person previously had hepatitis B that has now recovered. Now for our third set of labs, we see that the surface antigen is negative, which means that the person is not infected. The surface antibody is positive, which means that they are immune. And if we look at the core antibody, it is negative, which means that this person has not been exposed. The only way we can get these labs is if the person has been vaccinated against hepatitis B. All right, let's look at another example. So here this person is positive for surface antigens, which means that this person is infected. The surface antibody is negative, which makes sense because they are not immune in this case. The core antibody is positive, which also makes sense because they are exposed to the virus and currently have it. The core antibody is positive for IgM, which means that this is an acute infection. And if we look at the E antigen, that's also positive, which means that not only is it an acute infection, this person is also highly infectious. All right, now on to our last example. This person has positive surface antigen, which means that they are infected. Surface antibody is negative, which makes sense. The core antibody is positive, but if we look here, we see the IgM is negative. So this means that this person has IgG in their body because the core antibody includes both the IgM and IgG count. So we can say that this person has a chronic infection. All right, so now to recap. The presence of surface antigen means that the person is infected. Surface antibody indicates one of two things, that they've recovered from an infection or have been immunized against the infection. Core antibody can help you determine if the person's been exposed, and we can further break that down into IgM antibodies and IgG antibodies. And it's really these three that will help you determine the clinical status of the patient. Because the surface antigen can tell you if they're acutely infected, the surface antibody can tell you if they're now immune, and the core antibody can tell you if they've been exposed, but while combining it with the surface antigen and the surface antibody, you can tell if the person's recovered from that exposure. The E antigen, again, indicates high infectivity, so if you see that, that just means that the person is highly infectious at that time. And that is hepatitis B serology. I hope you found this helpful. Please make sure to like and subscribe, and good luck with your studies.